Welcome back to The O Show, everything crypto and NFTs every day. We have a jam-packed, short and sweet episode. But first, let's start off with some Bitcoin technical analysis. As you are all commenting, liking, subscribing, set alerts to this video, let's take a look at Miss B. She is still in our bullish mini trajectory. We're holding on to the EMA9 immensely well. However, it's looking like we could see some trouble if we break down below 23.6. If we do, that's fine. We've got a lot of support here. And just as long as we hold this trend line at approximately $22,000, we are good. We are looking for a flip of resistance at approximately 26.6, but be prepared for volatility. Well, 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 it looks like we have another big victory or mini victory for Ripple against the SEC. As a judge granted Ripple's request to review videos of the SEC officials, this apina is basically for the purpose to authenticate seven video recordings where the SEC officials made public remarks. This is also in connection with the court's July 19th order and the request in response to the SEC trying to reopen discovery and seeking waiver authenticity and other procedural objections to the SEC's video. Ripple said that the two subpoenas it looked to serve are not reopening of discovery and pose no timeline issues. Let's go Ripple and let's go XRP. This is very important to know, and this comes from a channel friend, Corey Clipston. Crypto companies must show liabilities equal to all customer crypto assets, according to the SEC's new rule, SAB 121, issued March 2022. Coinbase compiled for their quarter two filing and now shows an 88 billion customer crypto liability item. If you have cryptocurrency on any centralized exchange, especially after everything that happened with Voyage or Celsius, please consider utilizing cold storage. And I'm not exactly sure how this is going to play out in regards to Celsius or Voyager, because all crypto exchanges in the United States must now comply with the SEC. Another very important piece of information, we know that Tornado Cash got hit, and anybody who received a Tornado Cash transaction after the U.S. Treasury banned it, their wallets could potentially be frozen, especially if you've got USDC there. Well, according to our buddy, Gabor. He tweeted this, looks like roughly 1 billion shifted from USDC to USDT over the past month. After the recent regulatory push in the US against crypto companies and tokens, I wouldn't be surprised if the institutions and larger players felt safer with their money outside the US. So basically what happened is a bunch of people that owned USDC has have went ahead and transferred that over to USDT because they are scared of all of the regulations coming to the United States. And honestly, I don't blame them. And now while we're talking about stable coins, it looks like Akala's Polkadot stable coin went ahead and depegged after some issue with hackers, and they actually stole approximately 1.3 billion in tokens. As of right now, I am not in a whole lot of stable coins, and I have no interest in holding stable coins right now. I'd rather have cash or Bitcoin, Ethereum, because I'm just not trusting with all of the new regulation incoming, not financial advice. And of course, Gary Gensler is here talking about different amendments and different actions that want to occur. One of the biggest things they're talking about that's bothersome to me is the ESG. ESG, when I tweeted about this, means environmental, social, and corporate governance. What in the actual heck does the SEC have to do with environment, social, and corporate governance? Their job is to protect consumers. And of course, we have to talk about Do Kwan. He basically went public on this new, actually pretty cool crypto metaverse NFT platform for news. But I think it's actually just scandalous and upsetting that he's talk coming out talking about a $45 billion collapse that he was included in, acting like nothing happened and acting like he did nothing wrong. Absolutely disgusting, scandalous, and I'm just not with it any way, shape, or form. And I have no interest in getting involved in anything that Terra Luna has their name on. Last but not least, Monero Hard Fork goes live, bringing privacy improvements. This is going to be crucial here, especially for those of us who need privacy, want privacy, want liberty. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button, like, subscribe, settlers. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.